whenever the topic of server actions comes up, inevitably folks ask, well, now that we have server actions in something like Next.js, do we even need stuff like TRPC, GraphQL, or REST? And that's actually a complex question. So what we're going to do in this video is compare server actions to TRPC, GraphQL, and REST and give you some insights into which might be the best choice for your project. Let's get right into it. All right, let's introduce our four different paradigms. Starting off, we've got server actions. Server actions are functions that you define on the server. In the case of Next.js 14, you define them using the use server pragma, and then you can invoke them from the client by just calling that function. And Next.js or Solid Start or Quick or whatever framework you're using manages that entire flow of making that call for you. Next up is TRPC or Type Safe Remote Procedure Calls. You define the remote procedure calls that you want to have exposed by the server. It then automatically creates some handy query hooks for you and does all of that marshalling for you between the API endpoint and your function, which is really cool. It sits on top of HTTP and JSON. And despite what people may think, you don't have to be using TypeScript to use TRPC. You can make TRPC requests from any language. Next up is GraphQL. It is a query language that was created by Meta. It sits again on top of HTTP and JSON. There is nothing exotic about the return values. Those are simple JSON. What is interesting is the request format, which is a query language. And you can specify either queries or mutations. And the syntax for that query is well understood. And there's a full standard around that. And then finally, there is REST. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It is an architectural style where there are entities defined in a hierarchic structure. But beyond that, it, it really doesn't have a lot of formality to it or standards to it. And so you see things like OpenAPI and Swagger as ways to kind of lock down REST APIs. But REST APIs can have all kinds of different shapes and flavors and styles. So now let's get into comparing the various advantages and disadvantages of using server actions, TRPC, GraphQL, and REST. We'll start off with how easy each one of these is to set up. In terms of setup, server actions is incredibly easy to set up. It's actually built into Next.js 14 now, so you don't even have to enable anything. All you have to do is just start using them and they work out of the box. So that's why I'm giving it three up arrows. If it's three down arrows, that would be the lowest ranking. Three up arrows is our highest ranking. So how does that compare to something like TRPC? Well, TRPC is fairly easy to set up. The docs are pretty good about how to set this up in your environment. So I'm going to give that two up arrows. GraphQL is actually pretty difficult to set up. Not only do you have to go and set up the API endpoints and get those going, but you also usually have to do something like a GraphQL code generator to just go and create all of the stuff like the query hooks and everything else to keep it type safe, it is kind of a pain to set up. And then REST is really easy to set up in most of these environments. Next.js, Remix, they all have a way to create API endpoint routes. All right, what's next? Ease of use. All right, well, server actions, again, are incredibly easy to use. They are just functions. All you've got to do is just call these functions on the client, and the client does all of the work of actually making the request against the server and getting the data back, it couldn't be easier. It looks just like a function. And if you're familiar with React Query, TRPC is pretty easy to use as well, as are GraphQL and REST. They're basically just queries against that endpoint. And with React Query, you get all those status values and all of that, but let's face it, come on. Use Query is never going to be as convenient as just calling a function, which is what you do with server actions. Our next category is mutations. How easy is it to do a mutation? against the server. Server actions were designed to do mutations. So that's one of the places where server actions are really going to shine. Of course, they're pretty good across TRPC and GraphQL as well. GraphQL has specific types of queries known as mutations. That's all type safe, so that's really easy to use. Now REST is also really easy to do mutations with. But the thing with REST is, when it comes to these endpoints, you're basically kind of making it up as you go along. You get to define the API. You could use a get to make a mutation, which is not something you'd want to do. You could use a post or a put. You get to define the API that you want, 
And so in essence, you get to define a non-standard API and that can be a problem. All right, what's next? Well, queries. So the flip side of doing a mutation is to do a query. This is actually where server actions are not so great. So server actions aren't really designed to do queries. They're server actions after all, you're acting against the server, you're not querying against it, you're trying to make some sort of change on the server. And one of the things I've heard recently about Next.js in particular is that server action requests are queued. So if you wanna go and make multiple query requests against a server, you're gonna to have to wait for those to queue. And that's not great. When you wanna do queries, you're generally gonna to wanna to do multiple queries simultaneously. So that's something to watch out for when it comes to server actions on Next.js. Queries really shine, of course, on TRPC and GraphQL, but there's a big hidden gotcha on GraphQL. And that's the fact that a client can make up any query that they want against the server. And that can be deadly. You can get a denial of service against your API when someone makes an API, a malicious API request that ends up eating a lot of either database time or server time to accomplish that request. So that's something to watch out for when it comes to GraphQL. Now there are products like Wundergraph that allow you to do build time GraphQL, but run time rest that avoid that issue. So that's simply something you wanna think about when you think about putting GraphQL into production, particularly when you're thinking about high traffic sites. And then of course, rest is phenomenal for queries. All you've gotta do is just create a get endpoint and it's really easy. So another big question is how type safe are these? So server actions are fantastic. They're type safe right out of the box. You're just calling a function. And so TypeScript is able to track those types just as a function. Now type safety is one where I'm gonna give an advantage to GraphQL because GraphQL allows for introspection against the server. And that means that a client, whether it be on JavaScript or TypeScript or Go or Rust or whatever have you, can go and request against the server to get the schema from the server and create types off of that. So that is very, very handy and it's a unique advantage of GraphQL. And then REST is a problem when it comes to type safety because again, you can make up anything you want when it comes to REST. Now you could follow open API or you could export Swagger and potentially get types out of REST, but that's a lot of setup. And unless you're in a larger setup, most of the time you are just going and creating your own types around your own queries. And that's not great for type safety. All right, another vector of comparison is compatibility. So if you are going to have these endpoints, how compatible are they with other things making those calls? For example, you have a mobile client or you've got a desktop client. Are those going to interface with these technologies well? And that's actually one of the areas where server actions fall down. And that's because server actions, the API is effectively de designed by the framework. So you don't control what type of query it is, if it's a form post, what the actions are, the format of the request, you control none of that. So when it comes to a mobile client, if all you have is server actions, they're basically gonna have to look at the wire and see what's going across the wire and then imitate that to go and do the equivalent of the server action, which is not a great API. TRPC is really good for this. You can have those types that are then imported by a client if you've got JavaScript or TypeScript on the other client, that's going to be fantastic when it comes to TRPC. When it comes to something like Go or Rust or another framework, that's not going to be as good. But yeah, if you're doing TRPC between two different TypeScript applications, be it React Native and the web, that's going to be great. GraphQL is fantastic when it comes to interoperability. That's because GraphQL is a standard. And so you can make libraries that comport to that standard. And therefore you can have you know, iOS and Android libraries that are fantastic for doing GraphQL as well as Rust and Go. It's great. The rest is pretty good when it comes to compatibility. Pretty much everything you're gonna find is gonna be able to do a get or a post against some server, but you're not gonna get that really nice standardized request like you would with like a GraphQL. One last area of comparison that's specific to the web is whether it can work without JavaScript being enabled on the client. The only one that's gonna be able to do that are server actions. Server actions are often done as a form post. That's a basic function of the web and therefore can be accomplished without JavaScript. And the only thing that's gonna do that, of course, is server actions in this case. So if you need that, it's gonna be server actions or nothing. So my recommendations as of late 2023, after Next.js 14 has come out, are that for very simple, Next.js applications that are web only using a combination of queries 
on the server in React Server Components and Server Actions is going to be the easiest way to go. If you're looking to support mobile, if you're looking, if you also have mobile clients or desktop clients, then I personally would recommend probably TRPC. If it's an internal app or an internet app, I might also look at GraphQL as a possibility. Nice thing about GraphQL is it's really good on the server and the client, and it's really easy to make customized queries. But on the other hand, it's got that denial of service issue, so I wouldn't want to put it out on the open internet because it could potentially be denial of service. Well, I hope this helps you figure out what you want to use in your applications. Of course, let me know in the comments. Do you agree with my assessments or not? In the meantime, of course, hit that like button if you like the video. Hit the subscribe button if you really like the video, and I'll see you on the next Blue Collar Coder.